It took me seven years to become a doctor. And literally after just one year in, I almost freaking quit from burnout. I'm gonna share my personal experience with burnout and how I somehow pulled myself out of it. First of all, I didn't even really know what burnout actually was. I just used it as a synonym for stress or how you feel on a hump day Wednesday. You know, people working and then feeling tired and then summing that up into one word, burnout. But I think this oversimplification was the death of me. So I'm going to spell this out. Stress is your body's ability to respond mm -hmm. to the wild things in life, both positive or negative. People who are stressed actually do more and more, which mostly ends up taking a physical toll and can cause feelings of anxiety. However, this should be temporary. Burnout is a specific type of work stress where you just stop responding. You disengage, do less, become distant, feel helpless, and lack motivation. These all take a huge toll on your emotions and can eventually lead to depression. This is the result of stress that is not temporary. What's kind of frustrating is that I didn't know about this basic information until after I had unknowingly boarded the struggle bus to hell and was slapped in the face by burnout because I literally couldn't identify it and I just didn't know the risks. I actually learned about this basic information from a work presentation by my coworker Kiki, who is training to become a physical therapist. What's also kind of crazy is that 82.4% of physical therapists experience burnout at some point in their career. So you'd think I'd come across this information sooner. So Kiki had us all do a self-assessment for our risk of burnout that I'm showing on the screen right now. And as I was going through the questions, I was thinking, Wow, this would have been helpful before that time I felt disengaged, distant, helpless, and lack motivation. Try taking a second to answer these questions honestly and add up your score. But if you already know you're burned out, just keep watching. So before I share my score here, I want to share a term that Kiki also exposed me to that spoke to my soul. Compassion fatigue. It's literally what it sounds like, negative emotions that come from helping others. This is most common in helping professions like teachers or healthcare workers. But honestly, if you're a mom, a hairdresser, an Uber driver, or customer service at Home Depot, I quit. You're not off limits. So I don't know if it's just my face or the energy that I give off, but it is very common for patients to drop pretty heavy emotional atomic bombs on me, like right when I meet them and even more so the longer I work with them. So knowing that compassion fatigue is a thing that actually exists really helped my self-awareness in setting internal boundaries so that I don't run out of empathy by Tuesday and I can go to sleep at night and continue to help others. So thanks, Kiki. Anyways, now that I know that burnout is chronic work stress that results in no longer giving a shit, I'd like to talk about how I got out of this. This might seem really obvious, but the very first step is to make time to figure out why you're feeling the way you're feeling and how you actually got there. While I was working and pursuing my personal goals or whatever, I never took time to prioritize figuring out why I was so short and crying myself to sleep at night. I just figured I should just manage my stress better and that was the way things were. Putting distance between me and my problems helped me see the bigger picture without all of my emotions muddling things up. Unfortunately, what gave me this distance was getting sick and I didn't work for five days straight. Since I was physically incapable of doing anything else but thinking, I was able to look at the facts of my life and then come up with a plan to make changes in areas I could clearly see were problematic. But looking back, I didn't even need the entire five days to reflect. All I needed was a few hours on the weekend. And if you're not new here, you won't be surprised that my journal was critical in helping me see the bigger picture. Sure, I could go off my memory and reflect off moments that clearly indicated it was time for a change, but my memory isn't accurate and I could contort them into what I wanted to believe in the present. My journal disallowed me to lie to myself when I read things like, I think I'm starting to feel burned out. I might be giving too much to my patients energy-wise. I feel like my notes are draining me and I'm becoming upset very easily. I'm so tired. I want to quit my job. I think I could be successful on YouTube if I could focus on it. Yeah, so reading that was hard to ignore, so I did the next logical thing to get me out of burnout. Figuring out what I wanted. 
So after I confirmed how miserable I was in writing, I sat down with my journal and went through a very informal but effective decision tree. I wrote out all the possible outcomes I wanted and was honest with which one I wanted the most. Then I wrote out the steps required in order to get to each outcome. These are the actions I would have to take, like writing emails or deciding to commit to YouTube. Then I wrote out the risk and rewards for each outcome and reevaluated which one I wanted the most with this new information. Finally, I made a decision. At the very least, I knew that a change was going to be made no matter which outcome I chose and anything was better than what I was dealing with. This step was crucial for my zombified state of being to realize that I had more control over my situation than I thought. But all of this is a complete waste of time if I didn't take action. Again, this stuff seems kind of obvious, but it's actually harder to act on than you think, and that's because change is already difficult and it can be scary, but it also requires motivation, the one thing you're lacking when you're burned out. And besides not wanting to be an angry, detached, soulless healthcare professional, one thing that really motivated me was seeing how my stress was affecting others around me, specifically my wife, Abby. Thinking about how my stress became her stress was motivation enough to help me do what I needed to do to get out of the shithole of a situation I put myself in. Also, I didn't want to be that person that only calls their friends to complain about their job or whatever other stressors I had to whine about. Hello, what's up? Dude, can I tell you about my day really quick? It was so messed up. Sparing others from the worst version of myself was pretty good motivation to take action. So after I took some time to process why I was feeling the way I was feeling and how I was gonna get out of that situation using my journal, I took action by writing some emails and made commitments to doing things that I really wanna do. I took a break, but more importantly, I celebrated. Going on vacation to Guam for 30 days wasn't something I specifically planned to do to address my burnout, but I noticed that while I was there, I was constantly celebrating the changes I made. I felt like I had something to look forward to, but until then, I was gonna celebrate real hard. We celebrate so many positive changes in life, but I honestly think that celebrating the changes made to get out of burnout will further propel you out of that state of misery and give you some feel-good momentum into the next phase in life. But obviously, stress is a normal part of life, and that's not something that's gonna go away. But right now, my burnout score sits at 33, which means I'm at pretty low risk, but I still need to be careful. So if you wanna see how I manage my stress, check out this next video, TTYL.